May 15th. It started with whispers, the kind that slither through the cracks of a small town's facade. Whispers that something wasn't right. At first, it was easy to dismiss. The occasional mention of a strange flu going around, an uptick in doctor's visits, a few folks not showing up for work. But then the whispers grew louder, more insistent. I couldn't ignore them. Not when the signs began to multiply right before my eyes. I remember the first undeniable sign. It was a Tuesday morning, the sun barely cresting the horizon, casting long shadows down Main Street. I was walking to the diner, the same routine I'd followed for years, when I saw it. A government vehicle, nondescript and black, parked outside the Joneses' house. It was peculiar, out of place in our sleepy town, and it sent a shiver down my spine. By the time I returned home, the vehicle was gone, and so was the Jones family. No one mentioned them again. May 20th. The silence that followed was deafening. Sections of our town were suddenly off limits, cordoned off with yellow tape and signs that read hazardous material. But there were no explanations, no news reports, nothing. It was as if an invisible shroud had been draped over our town, suffocating us with unanswered questions. I started documenting everything. Photos, videos, notes. I became a collector of the unexplained, hoarding evidence of the nightmare unfolding around us. The more I observed, the more I saw. People were getting sick, their symptoms bizarre and varied. One moment they'd be fine, the next they'd be gasping for air, their skin mottled with strange, dark lesions that seemed to pulse with a life of their own. May 25th. It was around this time that I met the stranger. I was at the edge of one of the quarantined zones, camera in hand, when they appeared out of the shadow of an alley. Their face was hidden beneath a hood, their voice a raspy whisper. You don't know what you're dealing with. It's bigger than you can imagine. Before I could respond, they vanished into the night, leaving behind a palpable sense of dread that clung to me like a second skin. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. Eyes seemed to follow me from the shadows, monitoring my every move. Paranoia, perhaps. But in a town where the abnormal had become the norm, trust was a luxury I could no longer afford. June 1st. The internet became my sanctuary. The one place where I could share my findings and connect with others who'd noticed the cracks in our reality. I posted anonymously, of course, under the handle TRUTHSEEKER91. The responses were a mix of skepticism and fear, but among the doubters were those who believed, who had seen what I had seen. We exchanged stories, theories, desperate to understand the horror that had invaded our lives. But nothing prepared me for the night I saw them. The infected. I was following a tip from a fellow forum user, a claim that the old warehouse on the outskirts of town was being used to house the sick. What I found was a scene straight out of a nightmare. The warehouse was filled with cots, each one occupied by someone in the throes of the disease. The air was thick with the stench of decay, the sound of labored breathing and soft moans filling the space. I watched in horror as one of the infected convulsed violently, their body twisting in ways that defied nature, their screams piercing the night. I ran. I ran until my lungs burned and my legs gave out. The images of what I'd seen etched into my mind, a constant, haunting reminder of the darkness that had taken root in our town. June 5th. I write this now, my hands trembling, the weight of my knowledge a heavy burden. There's something very wrong in our town, a sickness that's more than just a disease. It's a harbinger of something sinister something that refuses to stay hidden. The government's silence is deafening, their actions a clear indication that we are not meant to know the truth. But I refuse to remain silent. I will document everything, share my findings with whoever will listen. The world must know what's happening here, even if it costs me everything. The whispers have become screams, and I fear what will happen when they fall silent once more. June 10th. 
The disease is mutating, spreading through the town like wildfire, its symptoms evolving in ways that chill me to the core. Last night, I watched from my window as Mrs. Henderson wandered into the street, her movements jerky and unnatural. Her eyes, they weren't human, not anymore. They glowed with a sickly luminescence, casting an eerie light in the darkness. I recorded it all. The video, a shaky testament to the nightmare unfolding before us. But when I tried to upload it, my internet flickered out, a clear sign that someone, or something, was trying to silence me. June 17th. I ventured out today, the first time in days, my camera hidden beneath my jacket. The town is unrecognizable, the streets deserted, save for the occasional military vehicle patrolling the area. I made my way to the local clinic, the epicenter of the outbreak, according to whispered rumors. The sight that greeted me was beyond horrifying. Bodies were piled outside, wrapped in black plastic, a grim marker of the disease's toll. Inside, the air was thick with the stench of death and chemicals. I watched as doctors, clad in hazmat suits, struggled to contain the chaos, their efforts futile against the onslaught of the infected. It was in the clinic's makeshift morgue that I found the proof I needed. The bodies were... changing. Limbs elongated, skin hardened into something resembling chitin, faces distorted into grotesque masks of their former selves. This was no ordinary disease. It was a transformation into something otherworldly. June 24th. The government's cover-up is more extensive than I feared. My posts are being deleted as quickly as I can upload them, my online allies disappearing one by one. But I found another way to communicate. A dark web forum, hidden from prying eyes. Here, we exchange information freely, our anonymity a thin veil of protection against the forces seeking to bury the truth. I've learned that our town is not the only one affected. There are others, each isolated incident part of a larger, more sinister pattern. We're piecing together the puzzle, the evidence pointing to a government experiment gone horrifically wrong. The disease, it seems, was engineered, a bioweapon that escaped its confines to wreak havoc on an unsuspecting populace. June 27th. Tonight, I took the greatest risk of my life. Armed with nothing but my camera and a stolen security pass, I infiltrated the quarantine zone at the heart of the outbreak. The scene within was apocalyptic, the infected roaming freely, their bodies twisted into monstrous forms. I filmed everything, my heart pounding in my chest, the fear almost overwhelming. But it was in the center of the zone that I found it, the source. A government facility, its exterior unassuming, but inside, a hive of activity. I watched from the shadows as samples of the disease were transported in and out, the scientists indifferent to the suffering they caused. And then, I saw them. The subjects of their experiments, humans no longer, their bodies a testament to the depths of human cruelty. June 30th. I'm being hunted. Since my return from the quarantine zone, I felt eyes on me, my every move tracked. My home is no longer safe. I've taken to hiding, moving from one abandoned building to another, my evidence my only companion. But I can't stop now. The truth is too important, the stakes too high. I've encrypted the files, sending copies to trusted allies with instructions to release them should anything happen to me. This story, our story, must be told. The horrors exposed for the world to see. The spread of the disease is no accident. It's a test, a prelude to something far worse. And we are the subjects, our town a petri dish for monsters hidden in plain sight. The fear is all-encompassing, a constant companion in the darkness. But it's the fear of the unknown, of what's yet to come, that haunts me the most. July 8th. As the days bleed into nights, our town spirals further into chaos. The disease, relentless in its spread, has transformed our once peaceful community into a living nightmare. The streets, now shrouded in perpetual darkness, 
echo with the cries of the afflicted and the haunting silence of the dead. The government's quarantine has become a death sentence, trapping us within the confines of our own despair. Efforts to communicate with the outside world have been futile, our pleas for help lost in the void. We are forgotten, abandoned to face our fate alone. July 11th. Our numbers dwindle by the day, claimed by the disease or lost to the madness that grips our town. Betrayal has taken root among us, fear turning friend against friend, neighbor against neighbor. July 19th. In a moment of desperation, we launched an assault on the facility believed to be the origin of our nightmare. Our hope was to find answers, to uncover a way to reverse the horrors inflicted upon us. Instead, we found only death. The facility, a labyrinth of secrets and despair, was heavily guarded. Those of us who made it inside were met with horrors beyond comprehension. Experiments on the infected that twisted the very essence of humanity. The air was thick with the stench of decay, the walls adorned with the remnants of failed subjects. July 27th. Our return from the facility was met with silence, the town seemingly abandoned. The disease has taken its toll, leaving behind a ghost town, a monument to our failures. The few survivors are shadows of their former selves, hollowed out by loss and fear. The realization that we are alone, truly alone, settles in like a heavy fog. The government will not save us, and the world beyond our quarantine remains blissfully unaware of our existence. Our fight for survival has become a waiting game, a slow march towards an inevitable end. August 1st. The world outside continues its oblivious rotation, while our small town succumbs to the silent grip of oblivion. The streets, once bustling with life, now serve as a mausoleum to the souls lost to the outbreak. The air, thick with the stench of decay, whispers the tales of the fallen, a constant reminder of our impending doom. The quarantine, once a barrier to protect the world from us, now feels like a cage designed to contain our despair. The eerie silence is occasionally broken by the sound of distant sirens, a grim lullaby for our abandoned town. The government's efforts to sanitize the truth have been successful. We are but a shadow, a rumor that will soon fade into the annals of unacknowledged tragedies. August the 8th. The disease, in its relentless march, has claimed nearly all. The few of us that remain are but ghosts, wandering among the remnants of our past lives, too weary to hope, too broken to seek solace in the company of others. The resistance, our last bastion of defiance, has dissolved into whispers of what could have been. In these final days, our connections to one another have frayed, leaving behind a community fractured by fear and mistrust. The realization that we are the last witnesses to the fall of our town is a heavy burden a solemn duty to bear witness to the consequences of human folly. August 15th. The nights grow longer, the darkness a veil that shrouds our town in mystery and sorrow. The infected, once our friends and family, now roam the streets, a constant threat to the fragile peace we've managed to cobble together. Our defenses crumble with each passing day the inevitability of our end looming like a specter over our remaining moments. In a final act of defiance, or perhaps desperation, we attempted to send a message to the outside world, a plea for recognition, for remembrance. But our efforts were met with silence, a void that echoes our own isolation. It seems we are destined to fade away, our story untold, our suffering unacknowledged. August 22nd. This will be my last entry. The power has been flickering for days, and now it's only a matter of time before we are engulfed in darkness. The world outside may never know of our plight, of the horrors that were visited upon our town. We will become mere footnotes in a history that continues without us, our existence relegated to the realm of forgotten nightmares. I find myself envying the oblivion that awaits, a release from the burden of consciousness. 
The silence that once terrified me now offers a strange comfort, a promise of peace in the absence of pain. In the end, our town will be reclaimed by nature, our buildings and bodies alike consumed by the earth as if we had never been here at all. August 29th. If this message finds its way beyond the confines of our cursed town, let it serve as a warning. In our hubris, we believed we could control forces beyond our comprehension, tamper with the very fabric of life itself. Our story is not one of survival, but of decay. Let our fate remind you of the cost of ignorance, of the dangers of playing God. We are but echoes of the forgotten, voices lost to the void, a cautionary tale whispered in the shadows of progress. In our silence, find the resolve to prevent our past from becoming your future.